Sì, grazie. Welcome to all participants and all to connect with us from anywhere in the world. Let's start the symposium today on transdisciplinary education for the citizen of the earth learn from pandemic. This symposium is of the third world congress of transdisciplinary in virtual format. Today, Today's symposium closed the fifth week of the scientific committee of the UNESCO Tradisciplinary Chair, Italy UNESCO, at the Congress on Tradisciplinary. The UTC Italia Committee is one of the four international organizing committees of the Congress chaired by Professor Julieta Ayer of the Instituto Nacional de Antropología y Historia from Mexico City. The other two committees are CIRET in France, Centre International de Recherche et Études Transdisciplinaires, and CEDRANS in Brazil, and the CEDRANS in Brazil, Brazil in the center of transdisciplinary education. Citizen of the Earth Week's theme is the historical utopia of our time. The experience of a suffering of the humanity in this second wave of the COVID pandemic <clears throat> marks even more human frailty especially of the most disadvantaged people, but commits us ever more as a community of the human species to accept the challenge of sustainable citizenship within the 17 sustainable development goals. In this global challenge, quality of education is at the forefront. Quality education constitutes goal four of the 2030 agenda. On the occasion of the COVID, UNESCO promoted the World Alliance for Education, serious damage by the pandemic and even more by its difficult and inadequate management in countries that have underestimated Within ASPNET, the challenge of education for global citizenship and sustainable development has become even more topical and urgent. The network of Italian schools associated with UNESCO and more generally the Italian school respond every day among great difficulties to the challenge of rebuilding education in the direction of the citizen of the planet Earth. Even if only some Italian school associated with UNESCO participate in this symposium due to evident team lines of the symposium, their contribution is an exemplary testimony. We appreciate their sensibility, sensibility sensitivity, commitment, 
and the skill in this difficult time of the pandemic. Their project enhances transdisciplinary innovation that interwines the methodologies and the contents of the disciplines to respond to the problems of educating the complex intelligence of young citizens for sustainable civilization. In closing this short presentation of our symposium, I am pleased to, to underline the presence of Madame Julie Saito Lubier, coordinator for the UNESCO of the ASPNET network. Our UNESCO transdisciplinary chair of the University of Florence and the international committees of the Third World Congress of Transdisciplinarity, in the person of President Professor Juliette Haider, you are delighted to welcome you, Madam Saito, to our symposium. Together with the Ministry of Education and the UNESCO National Committee for Italy, we warmly thank you for your participation as UNESCO's poker person on the fundamental work of the UNESCO Associated Schools Network for Education for Global Citizenship and Sustainable Development. Your presence emphasizes the interest and the appreciation of the UNESCO for the Italian network of school associated with UNESCO in the context of the Third World Congress of Transdisciplinarity, you are very eager to hear from you. I also thank the Ministry of Education in the person of the Italian coordinator for the Italian School Associated with UNESCO, Professor Carla Guetti, and, and also the plenipotentiary Ambassador Dr. Enrico Vincenti General Secretary of the UNESCO National Commission in Italy for the kind attention to the ASPRET Network program. Therefore, I declare the symposium open and I wish everyone good work in these three hours of reflection and debate for the transdisciplinary renewal of the school in Italy and in the world on the common path to become and to be citizen of air. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, all, all participants. I'm very honored to participate in the third International Congress of Transdisciplinary. On behalf of the Italian Ministry of Education and me, I would like to thank the Honorary President of Congress, Professor Bazarab Nicolescu, and the Centre International de Research in Etudes Transdisciplinaires, France. The President of Congress, Professor Julieta Aidar, and the National School of Anthropology and History, Mexico. The Professor Maria Fernandez de Mello, founder and board member of the Transdisciplinary Education Center, Brazil. I would like to say a special thanks to the Professor Orefice and the UNESCO Transdisciplinary Chair on Human Development and Culture of Peace, University of Florence, my country, Italy. A few years ago, I invited the Professor Orefice to the first edition of the summer school about philosophy, in particular, philosoph philosophical practice and complex thinking for the sustainable development, development and SGS of Agenda 2030. Since then, the professor has become an indispensable point of reference for contemporary discuss about these topics through the theoretical and practical approach in transdisciplinary. And now I present myself. Since 2012, I have been working at the Italian Ministry of Education in specific projects linked to humanistic studies, philosophy, history, 
classical language and cultures, Italian literature, particularly for the training and updating of teachers. I remember uh, many technical and scientific committee at the Italian Ministry of Edu Education. In, 19, in 2019, I was appointed the Italian National Coordinator of UNESCO Associated Schools Network by the Ministry of Education, jointly with the, with the Italian National Commission for UNESCO. The National Coordinator represents the link between Italian schools, the Italian National Commission for UNESCO, and the International Coordinator of at UNESCO. So, in this respect, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Enrico Vicenti, Secretary General of the Italian National Commission for UNESCO. Please, thanks. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, a general uh, thank you to all participants and organizers of these, uh, I would say, massive events that will uh, last all together almost one year. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of uh, the role of national commissions, uh, UNESCO national commissions uh, in each uh, of the countries that are members of the UNESCO family. Uh, but basically, basically what we do is to try to um, foster um, um, activities and the priorities of UNESCO within our uh, countries. And uh, in the Italian National Commission, we have always trying to do so by acting, uh, um, trying to um, bridge uh, all uh, UNESCO initiatives. So not to work on silos, but try to uh, make connections uh, between uh, the, difference, uh, the different uh, UNESCO initiatives. This, this is why I'm very happy to see uh, today a fruitful and strong collaboration between uh, the Italian uh, school associated to UNESCO and uh, um, the UNESCO chair in, uh, uh, in, in, in Florence. Um, I'm very glad to see that we have uh, four schools from Rome, Chieti, Lecce and Oristano. I, I would like to express a special welcome uh, uh, to them. Thanks to uh, Professoressa Guitti, we have been established a new and strong network uh, of the schools and uh, that are becoming more and more active. Um, I think what is very important uh, from our point of view is to try to break down barriers between natural and human science in order to overcome the dichotomy between nature and uh, culture um, for sustainable development. Uh, the Agenda 2030 of the UN uh, or United Nations, uh, it's a, a clear uh, representation of the complexity and the interlinkage of a global challenge and uh, uh, the achievement of the agenda really require a transdisciplinary approach. And this is why I think this Congress is very, uh, is very important. Uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, we all know that there is a clear uh, human uh, uh, cause uh, um, of this uh, pandemic um, that uh, can be found in the ramp rampant destruction of uh, by humans of biodiversity and uh, ecosystems. And this is why we really need uh, a strong focus on education to make people aware of the impact uh, um, of human on uh, the natural uh, world. And there is no other way to do so um, uh, than uh, having a transdisciplinary approach. This is why I really think that your initiative is extremely important. I thank you very much for uh, your engagement. I'm really interested in hearing experience from Italian school. Thank you very much. I thank Mr. Um, uh, Vicenti for his speech. Uh, interesting suggestion for the collaboration at the national and international level. And now, 
in the in this international contest, I am pleased to meet Miss Julie Sato Lubier, the international coordinator at UNESCO. I would like to thank for tireless work of her and her team during the difficult months at the first wave of pandemic. All of us have been connected to ASPNET, a real network for the international scientific and educational community, consisted of national coordinator, teacher, students, parents. Currently, ASPNET is organizing many activities virtual meetings, interesting conferences involving the ASPNET community about the pandemic and the impact on the school. In time of COVID-19, ASPNET's slogan is Stay Connect. And now I give the floor to Ms. Saito. Please, Julie, many thanks for your participation. Thank you very much, uh, Carla. Um, I'm such a, um, it's a great honor to be here with you and to spend this uh, uh, moment, especially it's such a difficult time for all of us. So um, to be connected uh, virtually uh, with all the, the concerning colleagues uh, who really want to share the same spirit, I, I'm really, really uh, happy to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, now um, give my presentation through PowerPoint. Uh, let me share with you the screen. Dear participants, dear organizers, it is an honor and a pleasure to have been invited to speak at this forum, the Third World Congress Symposium on Transdisciplinary Education for the Citizens of the Earth in this particular context. Allow me to first acknowledging the presence of our Italian ASPNET schools and this meeting's moderator, Ms. Cara Getty the Italian National Coordinator for ASPNET and commend her for her points about education for plen um, planetary citizenship, the experience of UNESCO Associated Schools Network ASPNET, which clearly demonstrate the central role ASPNET plays in transdisciplinary education towards a global citizenship. In the current context, UNESCO's education sector focus is on applying the principles of the uh, Dolores report in the framework of 4.7, namely to ensure all learners acquire knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Let me illustrate this point with a quote from the UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education, Ms. Stefania Giannini. For our very own survival, we must learn to live together sustainably on this planet. We must change the way we think and act as individuals and societies. So in turn, education must change to create a peaceful and sustainable world for the survival and prosperity of current and future generations. UNESCO's position on transdisciplinary in this context, especially in the context of its UNESCO response to COVID-19 in education, highlights UNESCO's core values and approach to education. ASPNET is a prime example of the appreciation and piloting, piloting of UNESCO's innovative thrust for the transmission and promotion of universal values which transdisciplinarity and inherent value shown in work across sectors to accompany this evolution of education 
in a broad view. Vision of education as comprehensive approach to learning to live together through global citizenship education, GCED, and applied as concrete level of schools through ASPNET. ASPNET aims to provide models and practices that can be adopted or expanded so that educational systems respond better to the challenges of our time with a view to overcoming exclusion and hate, prejudice and fear, violence and extremism, the destruction of the environment and climate change. Its overarching aims is to construct the defenses of peace in the minds of its students. And it has done that already since 1953, when UNESCO launched a project called Scheme for Coordinated Experimental Activities in Education for Living in a World Community. When it started out with a few countries and schools has grown into UNESCO largest network, bringing together more than 1,100 I'm sorry, 11,500 educational institutions from 182 countries. It, it includes all types of schools from all levels of education. And they are all connected through their shared ideas and values, which are those of UNESCO and the United Nations. UNESCO's position we have an innovative pilot project in line with UNESCO and ASPNET's function as laboratory of ideas. The whole school approach to climate change, which I want to put in focus as an umbrella approach to the implementation of different, more specific ASPNET activities. It is an inherent, inherently trans transdisciplinary approach. It brings together what is taught, how it is taught, extracurricular activities, teacher training um, approach. It, uh, it brings together what is taught, how it is taught, extracurricular activities, teacher training, decision-making processes, the physical buildings, the environmental and the wider community, or in the words of Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. The pilot for this approach mobilized 230,980 students, 13,853 teachers, as well as the 258 participating schools, principals, staff, and wider community in 25 countries. The pilot's overall purpose was to explore the feasibility and effectiveness of a whole institution approach to climate action at a global scale with students in diverse economic, geographic, social, and cultural contexts, as well as from different age groups. Key features of a whole institution approach to climate change are that it takes a holistic participatory approach and a combination of learning and actions to integrate sustain, sustainability in every dimension of a school learning institution. It means that students, teachers, principals, school staff, parents, local citizens, community organizations, and the private sector are involved and work together to embed sustainability in four uh, domains. Um, I would highlight school governance, teaching and learning, community partnerships, facilities and operations, figure two conceptual framework. The whole institution approach to climate change has the power to enable learners to lift what they learn and learn what they live and to change the culture of a school and its surrounding community. Countries from all world regions participated. Countries spanned along all income levels and geographical compositions, including seven least developed countries. 
and three small island developing states. The pilot contributed to understanding the significant impact a whole institution approach to climate change can have on students, teachers, and wider school communities' attitude, behaviors, and actions. 95% of participating schools integrated education for sustainable development in school curriculum, and it's taught through at least four different subject disciplines. Schools shifted their teaching and learning practices, focusing on inquiry-based, immersive, and real-life teaching and learning. Participants reported a shift in mindsets from zero interest to highlighted, heightened awareness and motivation to take climate action and the development of an environmental conscience. Students critically reflected on their career choices and pathways. For instance, female students in several schools expressed wishes to move towards STEM uh, higher education studies. Participatory and student-led decision-making was strengthened in participating schools and communities. Classroom and overall school climate improved significantly and participants developed a strong sense of belonging to their school and community. School climate action teams built transformative school community partnerships. 81% of schools formalized at least one partnerships with another school. Neighborhood associations, local government, environmental groups, media, local business, networks, universities, and or community centers. Partnerships focused on reinforcing school Greening, for instance, 94% of schools created school gardens, green nurseries of local species and eco walls. Improvement of litter and waste management. Optimization of water management. Improvement of health and well being. Institution of responsible consumption initiatives. Optimization of energy consumption. Introduction and promotion of alternative means of transport to and from school. Participants developed a new vision of what a school can be and to do for what they study and teach and to work in and for surrounding communities. Participants developed and strengthened their sense of belonging to a global community involved in climate action, including like-minded schools across the globe. The pilot project also made an impact on policy making in several participating countries where policymakers are currently moving towards integration of ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, in national curricula and scaling activities from pilot schools to all schools in their country. I will now show you, um, I don't know if we have two minutes, uh, it's a, a video on the pilot so you can see what uh, what just I told you about uh, about this uh, whole school approach to uh, getting climate ready. Uh, let me just, um, I hope this would work. If not, I have to move to another. It might not work. So, please, Carlo. Yeah. There is a problem. For if not, uh, I will just move to uh, the the last bit of um, presentation. It's okay. 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 Then, uh, yeah, let me just uh, quickly finish. Sorry to taking up so much time. Um, so in the, the current situation of COVID-19, 96% of ASP.NET member institutions were closed at the height of global lockdown. This is why in many of this year, the ASP.NET community came together through a global webinar, 
a global webinar to share and reflect on their own experiences of remote learning and to reimagine um, the diverse features, futures of education. Teachers and students emphasize the importance of social and emotional learning during COVID and made, um, uh, made pleas to make more space for that in overcrowded curricula. This reflection can be taken further a step. We need to reflect on what were the essentials of the curriculum that teachers selected to transmit during confinement. This can help to further identify areas for um, alleviating curricula and for making space and room for the learnings associated with SDGs target 4.7. The coordination team at ASP.NET has also adapted projects due to COVID. We have set up the Change Initiative for Teacher Education and Training Institutions. ASP.NET membership includes 104 teacher training institutes in 32 countries and all regions of the world. We call it the Change Initiative because the current crisis has not only brought with it massive change, it has also created a window of opportunity for more. We have a chance to bring about real transformative changes that make education systems more just, inclusive and resilient. I say this for two reasons. A shift in perception has taken place over the past months. Change is now perceived as inevitable and even as a necessity if we want to find solutions to the many challenges we're facing. Number two, this unprecedented crisis has already unleashed a great deal of innovation and creativity within the education sector, which we can build on and channel through this newly established initiative and in pursuit of SDG 4, for ta uh, target 4.7. So what do we aim to achieve? The Change Initiative sets out to build a community of practice with a mission to promote and strengthen global citizenship and sustainable development in teacher education and training. As the providers of teacher education and training, thousands of teacher, uh, uh, student teachers around the world, they have a unique and critical role to play. The need to greatly expand society's capacity to solve complex challenges has never been more important or more urgent. With just 10 years uh, remaining to the 2030 deadline of achieving the SDGs. Based on our work and the ASP.NET network, we now uh, we know that learning communities can be a very strong driver for innovation and change. Let me conclude by thanking you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. I hope uh, there are, will, uh, will be other important events like this and uh, uh, shared challenges require common solution, sense of responsibility and uh, solidarity. So topic very, very important for Italy, for Europe, for the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Next time. Thank you so much. Ben, and uh, now I start. Okay, uh, this is my short presentation. The title of my speech is Education for Planetary Citizenship, the Experience of UNESCO Aspirant in Italy. Uh, in this image, you can see the palace of the Italian Ministry of Education. The palace is an important example of the architecture of the early 20th century. 
It preserves an important artistic and cultural heritage. In the beautiful library, there are bibliographical rarities which trace the history of Italian education. This is the venue of the UNESCO Asknet in Italy. UNESCO story, a short story, in 1953, UNESCO launched a project to encourage the development of education in the aims of the Charter of the United States in the value of the Constitution of UNESCO and in the principle of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, including fundamental rights, human dignity, gender equality, social progress, freedom, justice, and democracy, respect for diversity, and international solidarity. In the course of time, the project was renamed many times. Now, it is called the UNESCO Associated School Network and its acronym is ASPNET. ASPNET is to construct the defenses of peace in the mind of its students. It emphasizes the few pillars of education as defined in the report of UNESCO of the International Commission of Education for the 21st century, learning the treasure within. As you know, they are learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and above all, learning to give, to live together. Many schools in many countries work in support of international understanding, peace, intercultural dialogue, sustainable development, and quality of education practice. ASPNET is a driver for innovation and quality in education. It is recognized as an effective tool for reaching 4.7 target on global citizenship education and goal of education for sustainable development. The ASPNET strategy for 2014 to 2021 identified global citizen education and education of sustainable development as the two priorities in the prospect of building peace in the minds and hearts of children and young people. The strategy compared to global changes, objectives of, of ASPNET are to integrate global citizenship education and the education uh, uh, development, uh, sustainable development into the teaching and learning processes of ASPNET school. To experiment innovative approach on global citizenship education and education sustainable development through ASPNET school. To strengthen the sharing of information, experiences and good practice among ASPNET schools. The main on learning, citizenship, global citizenship education and education sustainable development cover three domains of learning and promote specific learning objective. Cognitive, to acquire knowledge, understanding, and critical thinking about global issue and the inter interdependency of country and different population. Two, social emotional, to have a sense of belonging to a common humanity, sharing values and responsibilities, sharing empathy, solidarity, and respect for differences and diversity. Three, learning objective, behavioral, to act responsibly a local, national, and global levels for a more peaceful and sustainable world. The Italian schools must ask me. Italian joined the initiative in school year 1957, Italian Ministry of Education with the collaboration of the Italian National Commission for UNESCO. 
Every year, the Ministry of Education issue a call for applications containing guideline instruction on how to apply for membership asking. In June 2018, UNESCO Educators Sector provided new measures about the governance structure of ASPNET. An online tool for ASPNET, OTA, is available to facilitate efficient cooperation, networking, and communication. During school year 2018 to 2019, I and my team evaluated the admission process of applicant school on the basis of the new criteria and of its own preselection and preparatory procedures aligned with the general guideline provided by UNESCO. So, the Italian school members UNESCO Aspen are 23 of all levels. 16 pre primary primary school, seven secondary schools, technical and vocation education, the north, center, south, and Iceland area of Italy. Over 100 schools are pending approval by the ASPNET. So we hope that these schools will become ASPNET member as soon as possible. The Italian project, the schools are using three ASPNET complementary approaches. The first, creating as a laboratory of ideas, ASPNET develops, tests, and disseminates innovative educational materials and promotes new teaching and learning approach based on UNESCO's core value and priorities. The second, teaching and learning, capacity building, innovative teaching and participative learning in specific aspect thematic area, hello school, principals, teachers, students, and the wider school community to integrate UNESCO values and become role models in the community and beyond. The third, interacting. ASPNET gives its stakeholders opportunities to connect and exchange experiences, knowledge, and good practice with schools, individuals, communities, policymakers, and society as a whole. So, as you will see from the speech of the third teacher and the focal points then, the directors, teachers, and students involved in a UNESCO ASPNET experience increase awareness about the concept, practice, and behavior concerning global citizen education and education of sustainable development, human rights, peace, democracy, freedom, justice, cultural diversity, cultural hate, climate change, In this image, you can see the geographic map of Italy, where it is possible to focus on the cities of the schools invited to the symposium. They were chosen because their projects are aligned with the general objectives of the Third Congress of Transdisciplinary, especially with respect to the theme of this symposium transdisciplinary education for citizens of the earth, learning from pandemic. So in this international contest, the four schools will represent the contribution of the Italian education to transdisciplinary approach and methodology through innovative projects and activities. We are very happy to say their contribution So, I want 
About transibility, transdisciplinary vision, I want to leave. I want to leave you with this last slide containing the truth of Leonardo da Vinci, who invites respect for nature and all living beings. Today again is taught the works, the painting can represent a good way for the future citizen of Earth. Thank you very much. So, so I let me introduce the first school. Uh, this is uh, uh, from uh, area uh, Abruzzo in the center of Italy, Lanciano. Uh, this is a primary school, Mario Bosco. Please, head teacher Mirella Spinelli. Good morning. I would like to thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity given us to present our project. Now, I'll give the floor to the teacher Eva Masciangelo for the presentation of the project. Condividi schermo, come si chiama? No. Ok. Ok. No? Sì. Ecco. Sì, ci sono andato. Sì, questo. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I start introducing the school. The name of our school is Mario Bosco. It is in Lanciano, it's a state school in the region of Abruzzo, in the center of Italy. It is made up of an infant school, a primary school, and a secondary school. The principal is Miss Mirella Spinelli, and the group of work uh, who arranged the project are Mirella Spinelli, Gabriella Schips, Giovanna Borrelli, Antonella Francione, Roberta Geminiani, Maria D'Amelio, Giuseppe Barchi, Antonella Cotellessa, Anna Lorella Di Tampli, Laura Rita Carpineta, Velia Gian Giordano, Eralda Assenti, Luciana Di Lorenzo e Gianluca Bellisario. The focal point of the project is how we lower the transdisciplinarity into the school reality. We try to teach how to live and overcome the negative aspect of the isolation due to the pandemic by stimulating the search for meaningful relationships with the other and through new tools for dialogue and for intercultural communication using, for example, music and creativity, different strategies for the communicative psychomotor skills, using new technologies that are functional to the communicative and cognitive relationship in a global and transcultural logic. In our school, we have prepared a listening desk to dialogue and compare adolescents' problems. And we are preparing in these weeks a virtual library for an intercultural knowledge and comparison. We also promote a sustainable daily life, paying attention to climate, city, viability, local 
heritage. We promote food and water, paying attention to human life and his welfare. We promote social and personal welfare in the curriculum and interculture, raising the voice against injustices, violence and human differences. We strongly believe in teaching of proximity with the use of technology and the reduction of the gap among peoples. We strongly believe in man and right, in his autonomy of thought of life. Let's see the title of our project. It's uh, Let's Overcome the COVID for a Renewed Sociality and an Earth Sustainability. We have taken the problem of COVID-19 as a pedagogical and didactic occasion to develop a global resilience through universal criteria of earth sustainability. The subjects involved are different. For the infant school, the five fields of experience. For the primary school, the anthropological area, the logical mathematical area, and the linguistic area. For the secondary school, all the subjects are involved, in particular math, science, Italian, history, religious education, civics, geography, technology, foreign languages, and music. We promote the interdisciplinarity and the transdisciplinarity through fields of experience, disciplinary fields, and subjects linked and convergent on the main goal of the project, using a common methodology and extrapolation of a specific contents of each subject about the search of information of COVID-19 and interdisciplinary and multi-systemic lab to promote a relationship of problem solving. A methodological overcoming of teaching for each subject for an interdisciplinary relationship and the new opening to a larger concept of transdisciplinarity. Our students have worked through documentary research, lab activities, analysis of the results, debate and comparison, and distance learning. In this way, they have acquired a sense of belonging to the Earth community, a consciousness and knowledge of the cultural difference as a resource, an acceptance and overcoming the diversity, resilience as a transformation of the problem into an opportunity. The project lasts three years. The classes involved are 42 and the students 846. All the teachers are 107. All the subjects and the fields of experience are involved. And even the students' families play an important role in this project. Uh, we have to mention some important associations that help in the project. We have to thank for the support, the transdisciplinary chair, human development and culture of peace, directed by Professor Paolo Refice of University of Florence. We have to thank the Italian National Association of Pedagogies, the town hall of Lanciano, the cultural association of Mastro Giurato. Mastro Giurato was an old judge who helped in the city administration during the Middle Ages. We thank Ecolan, a joint stock company involved in recycling and waste management, the Institute of Museum Management, FI, that is an Italian foundation born to save and enhance the artistic and natural Italian heritage, Lega Ambiente, an Italian association to save the environment, and AMPI, the National Association of Partisans 
who fought against Nazis, fascism during the Second World War. Let's see now the learning goals. They have been divided into three learning areas, the cognitive area, the social-emotional area, and the behavioral area. Of course, they all converge into the acquisition of transdisciplinary skills to support the transition towards a sustainable thought and world. The project has the purpose to develop in this way in young learners the skills that can't be taught because they describe the specific characteristics each individual needs to organize himself and act in a known context in an independent and discriminating way. The cognitive learning goals are to know the pandemic in a scientific way, to encourage the role of technology as a tool of work, communication and information, to promote and encourage democracy, justice, equality, and the rule of law. The social emotional learning goals are to know the pandemic as a sociological phenomenon and see the psychological effects on the individual and the collectivity. To use the personal creativity to look for new strategies and relationship with the others. To promote the sensitivity towards the most fragile and the weakest people, because no one can be left apart. To promote and encourage dignity and rights. To understand the balances between the local and global ecosystems to adopt sustainable lifestyles and restore the right relationship between man and nature. And last but not least, the behavioral learning goals. They are to use these sanitary emergency to overcome our selfishness due to the isolation provoked by the pandemic. To understand, think and overcome the pandemic to develop skills, behaviors and attitudes that can adapt to the different lifestyles regarding the sanitary emergency. To implement new strategies for a new civil society, to identify the changed power balances in the world, to develop the right skill of psycho, physical and emotional management. The approaches and methodologies. We have to say that our school encourages the skills of everyone, encourages the building of a personal life project, starting from the student's life and aiming to an active dynamic learning that promotes the development of the soft skills. Each student is the protagonist of his growth and he's projected towards a global citizenship. These are the approaches and methodologies used. Uh, point zero, that is the initial analysis. Then the research action through the brainstorming, the problem solving, the debate, the peer-to-peer, -peer, the flipped classroom. Uh, the cooperative learning, the peer tutoring and the role playing. The transdisciplinary skills that are expected at the end of the project is to be independent from a psychological, emotional, relational and behavioral point of view. To be aware of uh, our own skills independently from the other people's opinions, to discriminate critically the reliability of the sources of information and communication, to be able to adapt to new situations and create others, to plan and organize, identifying goals, priorities and resources available, to express sense of initiative, 
proactivity and pro-sociality to keep control in front of new situations, to be able to work in team and to be able to lead and motivate all the members of the group. So making a summary of the role of UNESCO ASPNET regarding the topic of transdisciplinary education for the citizens of the earth, learn from pandemic, we can say that COVID-19 is seen as an opportunity to rebuild better, to reinvent and project again the education for the future in a new perspective. The digital technologies are an important unifier instrument and uh, they permit to enter the communication and the world community. The social community is uh, as a meeting place and the place of a unique relationship to encourage the interaction among the citizens of the world. The traditional education is no more useful and it is necessary a new form of contents and instruments. Lifelong learning helps the expansion of contents. The relationship between school and family is a dynamic and important model. It is fundamental to take part actively to the life of school communities. The UNESCO ASPNET promotes uh, the personal health and sanitary education, both physical and emotional, to include in the school curriculum as recommended by the World Health Organization. It promotes empathy between peoples and cultures. It promotes the global citizenship without renouncing to the attention to the collapse of the environment. It promotes the transdisciplinarity to overcome the single subjects. It promotes the collaboration between local collectivities and communities that interact with the school for an active relationship. And it promotes, of course, peace as a strategy of dialogue and elimination of every kind of violence. Thank you for your attention. We are really honored to have been chosen and have the opportunity to take part to this important symposium. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's beautiful project, interesting project. Please, uh, Julie, there are two questions for you. Yes. Answer, please. Okay. Please switch off the microphone, please. Uh, uh, yes. Allora, the, the first question is for Mrs. Saito. Good afternoon to, to everybody. And let me tell you that uh, as a member of the Italian Congress Committee, it's a pleasure for me to be present here with the school of ISPNet to understand how they work and what methodology they use to promote transdisciplinarity. Uh, as professor uh, at the University of Siena, this is an important moment for us to share good practices and idea about uh, what transdisciplinarity is and how it works. So start with some questions. The first is for Mrs. Saito, Marisol Cardenas, how the model that you describe works with ancestral knowledge, for example, handcraft that are inherited often in a familiar mode of knowledge, how are related with the techno-capitalist hegemony? So this is the first question. Thank you very much. Uh, what a big question, and it's, it's a difficult one to, to answer, I mean, especially I took my post uh, as chief of this uh, ACNET uh, in February. And so actually six weeks later, uh, this COVID lockdown took place everywhere in France included, where I live. 
And um, we learned uh, through communication, uh, especially like we launched a, news a newsletter and we organized webinars. We tried to invite uh, teachers, students, and even parents how to deal with this problem uh, of like uh, during the closure of schools. But we can still teach about the importance of global citizenship. How can we do this? And I think this uh, lockdown taught us, I think the good example uh, that we also absorb from the uh, participant is that it does not just take the connectivity issue. You know, I mean, a lot of countries in Africa, especially uh, there are many schools and children cannot access to. But in that case, how could uh, maybe uh, a teacher connect with schools differently? Maybe um, ask a parent to play uh, a role uh, to also understand the importance of teaching um, global citizenship education, which means that relationship or gender equality or understanding of the environmental issues. I, mean, there, I think that we should now uh, uh, feel more of the necessity of hearing the voices uh, around, around you, not just the, in the school, but uh, how a, a, a child can connect with the, the parents and also with the community. And maybe teachers can also uh, believe in an important role of parents, that how parents can also become the uh, intermediary um, uh, a role between the educators and the, uh, the students. So I think the, it, it, it also uh, talks about the whole school approach. I think the education now, nowadays, we understand that it does not only take place at school, but I think we need to bring in uh, every uh, people around in the school community, including people working on the street, working in the, in the shops, and, uh, and uh, maybe also can parents also play a role. So I think it's the whole school approach is the key to understand the, the global citizenship. And uh, so I think that COVID experience taught us how we could connect and bring in people together. So this is how I could maybe answer to that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Saito. Uh, we have another question probably related with the first one. The question is from Victoria Mendoza Barros. Uh, there is a coaching training for teacher to work with the transdisciplinary approach. Thank you. Uh, this is exactly, uh, I think uh, during my presentation, I also uh, shared a new project is called the Change Initiative. And uh, this is the first time that uh, we're targeting uh, this project for the teacher education uh, training institutes. Well, among this uh, 11,500 uh, members in 182 countries, we have about 100 institutions uh, located in about 30 countries. There are teacher training institutes. And we really think that the importance of now to, to really teach teachers how teachers can be more equipped of how, trans, how they can transmit the importance of global citizenship education to the students. So therefore now we started this uh, a new project, uh, Change Initiative. That means we, of course, we organize now webinars. I mean, we will very much like to have more uh, physical meetings, but because of the COVID situation now, uh, we have decided to launch a series of webinars. We're inviting uh, school deans and teachers, uh, you know, the professors of these institutions, and also uh, students as, a, as, a, as an example of uh, teacher students to join in and, and share this idea of how they can build a better curriculum and how, how they can also train to use the, the technology better to connect with students, even uh, despite of the situation going on with the, the COVID. And, uh, and, uh, and after joining this uh, uh, series of webinars, we would invite them to create synergies among uh, schools to schools, but also maybe region to regions, the world, you know, we should really connect a bit to different ideas. And uh, I hope that of course, ASP.NET is it's, it's a family and we really share so much uh, how to connect with you know, our family members. But I think the, the important mission of ASP Net, Network, after all, is not just be happy among the family, you know, to share the good knowledge and good practices, but I think we would like to reach out beyond the ASP Net 
and then so that we can also influence the policy makers in your country. And uh, by sharing good practices, maybe they can also influence other countries' policymakers. And that's the whole objective of how it, it starts from ACNEP, but then those teacher education institutes can then reach out to other school teachers and that they can also influence policymakers. So we really believe in now the importance of uh, teacher training. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Saito, to, to, to share with us uh, your ideas and methodology. There is a, another question, but probably I can, uh, I can answer because uh, uh, Maria De Mello uh, is asking if we can share the methodology that uh, the Lanciano School explain uh, in the site of the Congress, uh, yes, uh, all the materials of the conferences around the table and the symposium will be presented on the Congress website in the future. So yes, we can share this kind of uh, presentation. Uh, Professor Isaghetti, if you want, we can go on with the other school, please. Another school, yes, I introduce the second school from uh, region Puglia, um, the city is uh, Lecce. Uh, her teacher, Tiziana Fagiano, and focal point, Antonia Martina. The, the title of uh, uh, their project, Transdisciplinary Education, Cooperation and Solidarity for a Global Citizenship. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our school is called uh, Sigismondo Gastromediano. It is composed of three infant schools and two primary schools in Lecce, a small town in Apulia in the southeast of Italy. The entire school community is deeply aware of the educational challenge all of us are involved in. The crisis of the families as primal social institution commit our school to share responsibility with families, building day by day a common framework of values, which leads the educational path to a lifelong project with a long-term vision. As an intentional choice, we meet families before knowing our pupils, firstly at the enrollment, secondly before the starting of school year, Opening a productive dialogue with our pupils' parents is a strategic step. We collect families' expectations. We help them softening their emotional stress, giving them the pedagogical sense in each part of school life. Our pupils are in the middle of a crossway where strategic lines, learning environment, well-being of each person, management of complexity meet in a common horizons of meaning. We plan the curriculum having in our mind a perspective of future. We have imagined what our pupils need now in order to be ready to manage the world to come. The 17 sustainable development goals are our educational and didactic goals. We have tried to harmonize the fundamental principles of the Italian constitution with the United Nations 2030 agenda. So curriculum subjects and life skills combine to develop a, a workshop approach in which teamwork methods, social skills, integrated arts, languages, and contemporary topics raise the awareness of the complexity and stimulate essential abilities to understand the world. A strategic project for the school is the UNESCO School Net membership in connection with the UNICEF Protocol for Children's Rights and National Plan for Education to Environmental, Economic and Social Sustainable Development. These strategic projects are composed of different actions which are aimed to develop global citizenship. Kids uh, Synergistic School Garden specific didactic paths about Shoah and peace education, inspiring to Montessori method, specific activities for development of emotional and social skills, 
also through philosophy for children, actions of uh, solidarity planned by and managed by uh, elder pupils in collaborations with families, experiences of active citizenship in kids city council, specific actions directed to families about parenthood topics, digital skills and coding workshops. Because of COVID pandemic, uh, the learning environment has shifted to open air classrooms under the trees in the school garden or in specific roofed open spaces. And the alliance with families for distance learning has become fundamental because meaningful learning experiences have no borders and can't be locked down. And now let me introduce teacher Antonia Martina, the planner of our project called Mediterraneo. Thank you. Does the club of butterflies wings in Brazil set over a tornado in Texas? And so it happened. This time his action has changed our lives and those of more than a million people around the world. How can this be explained? Our habit of compartmentalizing knowledge and mechanizing the processes that regulate the art system has distracted us from the vision of the world from the essence of the very concept of a system, so its complexity. In the last 10 years, social equalities have increased. Poverty has doubled, tripled for young people and children. The distance between North and South has grown. The pandemic has aggravated the situation and highlighted the difficulty of the welfare system in providing timely and appropriate responses. It's necessary to rethink cooperation as an exchange among structures, doctors and the universities that are able to work with their colleagues in other countries and the exchange that leads to a common growth in the certainty that everything that happens around us concerns us and that the relationship with the countries in transformation is no longer to be understood as a unilateral aid, but is a step towards a more united globalization that helps everyone. Mediterranean is a pedagogical, didactic, experiential and political proposal organized around basic values such as human rights, legality, the importance and respect for diversity, dialogue between cultures, mutual interdependence and the need for one sustainable development from an economic, social and environmental point of view which proposes transversal, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary paths. The project is structured in three phases. One, Mediterranean has a crossroad of peoples and cultures. Two, human rights and peace from the Mediterranean to the world. Three, traveling in the Mediterranean, beauty and sustainability. Mediterranean meets target 4.7 of the SDGs Agenda 2030, as the UN said, ensured by 2030 that all learns acquire the knowledge and the skills necessary to promote sustainable development, including two education aimed at sustainable development and lifestyle, human rights, gender equality, the promotion of a peaceful and non-violent culture to global citizenship and to the enhancement of culture diversity and the contribution of culture to sustainable development. International cooperation 
is remains important in resisting growing nationalist pressures and proposing one's own global vision. In these dark moments for mankind, it's good to appeal to the solidity that comes from knowing that we are responsible for the fragility of others seeking a common destiny. Solidarity isn't thinking about the priority of everyone's life and acting in terms of community. It's also fighting against the structural causes of poverty, inequality, lack of work, land and housing, the denial of social and labor rights. The future of humanity and nature is in our hands. No one can save himself alone. Fernan Brodel tells how in Mediterranean basin various civilizations, peoples and cultures have developed and mixed each other to form the culture crossroads that we have today. Having been is a condition for being, says Brodel. Now the questions to ponder are can we still call migration what seems to be a deportation which has turned migrants into slave hostages from the merchants of death? And aren't the new desaparecidos the many nameless ones that we have not saved and that have fallen into depths? Our Mediterranean is a beautiful experience. We can grow up all together thanks our ideas which become the desire to realize a dream, the realization of a world of everybody and for everybody and to take care of it, respecting the human rights, in the affirmation of a social justice, in the commitment to a sustainable development, imagining an and an educational project for present and the future of our Europe means that the school must take on the responsibility of building the only realistic alternative, the Europe of people. We have to build a civilization of the art. We have to inaugurate an anthropological evolution towards coexistence and peace. The most Important problems that today affect our continent and humanity cannot be faced and resolved within traditional and national borders, but only through the understanding of a part of a great common traditions of a single community of a European destiny, as well as of a single community of a planetary destiny. Human rights in the school are not universal and abstract products of the spiritual evolution of humanity, but are perceived within the educational experience as directions of meaning constitutive of the same educational action culturally oriented to peace. A broad formative ideal is outlined and it prefigures transdisciplinary axis around which the educational project of the school can be built for the formation of a citizen of the world and for the construction of a peaceful society. In this phase, the anthropological and the sustainable aspect of the Mediterranean is analyzed to the journey in space and time, in the Mediterranean, we are curious explorers, also with an eye to the event of the past that can be lessons for today's challenges. Hospitality, welcome, coexistence, cooperation, sustainability for peace among peoples and the salvation of the planet, which is the only one we have. The Mediterranean is presented as a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary theme. Its history, geography, literature, philosophy, science and economics, international law and much more. The terms inter, multi, poly, transdisciplinarity are polysemic and fluid. A discipline must be both closed and open. 
The ideas that allow you to grow are those developed through contents that stimulate the intelligence that spread from our mind to a magnetic procedure in which the teacher and the learner both come into play, reaching an authentic truth. Global citizenship education is based on free learning areas, cognitive, socio-emotional and behavioral. The cognitive area embraces knowledge and reasoning skills necessary to better understand the world and its complexities. The socio-emotional area prefigures values, attitudes and social skills that allow you to live all together in conditions of peace and respect. The behavioral area identifies, conduct, actions, practical application and commitment. They are interconnected and integrated into the learning process and should not be viewed separately. In formal education area, the school uses the approach of involving the entire institution together with a transversal approach. In non-formal education area, collaborations have been activated among NGOs with other educational institutions and by internet. The quality of the apprenticeship experienced by every student in the school remains the challenge of a new humanism. This is an apprenticeship of humanity and culture in which cooperation among teachers becomes a model of cooperation between teacher and student and among students themselves. Gardner says the goal is to educate to understand. Therefore, understanding ecologies, tensions and war balances in the awareness of living within an interdependent system in which every action causes effects on local and planetary dynamics. The school mission is to teach people to connect and at the same time it's necessary to learn to problematize and to conclude with Moren. If I were a teacher, I would try to connect the issue starting with the human being, showing their biological, psychological, social aspect. I could access the disciplines maintaining the human body among, the, among them and showing the man in his whole. Key competencies represent a combination of knowledge, skills and attitudes that help everyone to manage your life context in a flexible and appropriate way. They intersect, overlap and complement each other. These competencies favor the improvement of critical ability, creativity, spirit of initiative, the ability of problem solving, the ability to work in a team, to decide and to manage one's emotions and feelings. Citizenship competence refers to our ability to actively participate in civil life thanks to the knowledge and respect of shared values that refer to concepts such as democracy, justice, equality, citizen rights and duties, cultural identities, respect for environment. It's Edgar Moran's pedagogical warning that directs to a new education towards the construction of an anthropological, ecological, dialogic and terrestrial civic consciousness. The school is a key institution, a place where global citizenship is educated and developed and the conditions for individual and system resilience are built. 
Equitable and inclusive quality education for lifelong learning for all, as required by Goal 4 of the 2030 Agenda, requires the use of a pedagogical model, the values commitment, responsibility and the sense of global citizenship. Our school aligned with the national and international systems builds educational and training courses multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, in which the disciplines tool of thought serve to know, to understand, to evaluate, to act through an encyclopedic approach that restores unity to human knowledge in diversity. It's a question of developing the knowledge tools necessary to understand the natural, social, cultural, anthropological context in which students will find themselves living and operating. The criterion of anthropological sustainability must be organically combined with that of environmental sustainability in the perspective of a sustainable society that has a democratic form. Thank you so much to everyone and thanks for the attention. Thank you very much for the point. Very, very okay. interesting. Thank you. Thank you. This is your project, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you to our speakers. There is a, a question, so we decided to, to answer to the question at the end of each presentation. Uh, so the question that is very important uh, for a pedagogist like me and like us, the question is for Antonia Martina, Lecce Primary School, uh, in your speech you said that faced with a complex and changing situation like the current one, is necessary to learn to think about complexity, which among other things means educating to change. How to do it? This is the question to Antonia Martina. Well, in the classroom context, the need for a teacher to have the great tools to educate about uh, complexity becomes evident. One of these tools, in my opinion, could be the pedagogical device of irony, as Socrates explained in this sentence. The only certainty I have is that I know I don't know. These words remind us that life is a continuous search. Search for truth, search for knowledge, search for ourselves. Whatever kind of research it is, this means we must learn how to welcome a change. Irony determines the formation of attitudes that have to do with, with solidarity, cohesion, dialogue, but also adaptability, resilience, critical and divergent thinking. Irony is a dialectical exercise that helps us to choose, to recognize illusion, to face mistakes and uncertainties, to understand the complexity that surround us and to open ourselves to change. It's necessary to bring irony back into training processes and cultivating it from childhood to literature, games, and a lot of creative activities that accustom the mind to meta reflection. Irony is able to stimulate the development of skills that are at the basis of an authentically democratic coexistence that is characterized by attitudes oriented towards negotiation, dialogue, confrontation, pluralism, empathy, 
and respect for the other. Forming ironic minds means educating everyone to change. Let them be ready to questioning, overcoming one's limits and transforming mistakes into opportunities. I agree with those who say that today, it's necessary an ironic habitus to be citizens of the world. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Oli. Uh, another one suggestion from my colleagues, colleagues from Brazil, I suppose, Maria de Mello. And uh, congratulations for the presentation and the method that can set a new form and approach to tourism as educational process. So this is the, the suggestion from Brazil. Uh, probably now we can go on, Professor Saguetti, with the, the third school. Okay, allora, I introduce the third school. Uh, this is a secondary school, as a Liceum, Liceum uh, of Rome. Please, I, um, I let, uh, um, uh, I, um, uh, the, uh, the title of, uh, um, uh, project is uh, Global Citizenship in Transdisciplinary Education. Her teacher, Elena Zacchilli, and focal point, Maria Rosaria Fasanelli. Please. Okay. Mrs. Zacchilli, can you see? Can you see uh, that? Thanks. Okay. Thanks. I see everything. Thank, Thank you, you to everyone. It's uh, a big pleasure for me, for my school, to be here in this uh, important World Congress. And uh, only a few words to introduce my school. Uh, as uh, uh, Professoressa Guetti said, uh, our school is Liceo Niccolò Machiavelli, a big school in the city center of Roma with the three different buildings. It's a secondary school with more than uh, 1,300 pupils stay aged for, from uh, 14 to 19. And the focal point teachers are Maria Rosaria Fasanelli, Maria Cirincione, Vittoria Antonucci, Monica Rizzo, Gabriella Pastore, Augusta Caris Marconi. And they teach different subjects English, Latin, History, Geography, Italian, uh, of course, and the Physical Education. And uh, our school is a very ancient school. In the picture, in the upper side of the slide, you see the, the more ancient building that was a private house in the 19th century and became a school in 1936. And uh, there are three courses, social studies, languages, law and economics. And uh, now I leave the speech. I introduce uh, Maria Rosaria Fasanelli, our focal point teacher for the presentation of the project. Thank you, Mrs. Zacchilli. Okay, in our school, there are more than 1,300 pupils. The number of students is more than 120 teachers and other personnel, let's say more than 30, um, 30 per people. Okay, so under the, um, um, the umbrella of global citizenship in transdisciplinary education, we actually want to uh, put our emphasis on active participation, active civic participation in the digital era, an era which has becoming more and more digital because of the current pandemic. So bear in mind that at the moment we are working 100% um, distance learning in high schools in Italy. A subtitle might be there's no plan B, which means that this is a title chosen by our students. And that is to say that we want to put our focus, put our emphasis on climate action. There are quite a few teachers and also subjects involved. So 
uh, I have to say that we started with English. So some English teachers decided to delve into Rachel Carson's Sun and Spring. Rachel Carson is an American, was an American marine biologist and eco-activist. And she predicted what would happen in our world. So some English teachers got involved into that and they involved as a, as a consequence chemistry teachers, biology teachers, because the main point made by Rachel Carson was uh, that chemicals and pesticides can deeply harm our, because of farming systems, our soil. Okay, biology is endangered and biodiversity is endangered because of that. Then we know that uh, underneath every pattern we have, I'm sorry, I, I, I hear a echo. I don't know whether there are some, some, some mics on. I'll kindly ask you to switch off your mics. Uh, so then we, we involve the philosophy teachers. Why? Because we know that underneath uh, every phenomenon which is happening in the world, there is a, a a pattern and uh, this pattern can be deeply rooted in the past. So maybe the Cartesian dichotomy between mind and uh, nature can, as, uh, um, can make us understand that we can manipulate nature. I say, so for our, for our teachers, it's important to understand that uh, there is always a philosophical a thought beneath everything. And last, oh, then there are other two subjects involved of uh, religious education. Religious education, especially um, an encyclical letter uh, by Pope Francis, uh, Laudato Si, in which you have an emphasis on the respect we owe to nature. Last but not least, uh, history. How many uh, industrial revolution we have gone through, at least three, okay? The first one may be steam engine and coal, the second one combustion engine, electricity, the third one atomic energy and ICT, and many people thought and think of uh, uh, a fourth revolution, industrial revolution. So as you can see, quite a few teachers uh, from um, teaching different subjects uh, have been working on that. So how do students work? Students can work in pair, can peers, can work in group, can also work individually, can work in presence or in remote learning. As I said before, we have been working on in remote learning since, uh, well, I would say for a month. Okay, so nowadays in Italy, 100% of uh, teachers of um, schools, uh, secondary school, high secondary schools are working. Can you imagine that? Completely remote teaching. So we are working on these subjects uh, completely in remote in distance learning. We started from uh, what? From the observation of our context and from our need. What is the context? The context is our suffering earth our suffering planet. And what is the need? That we have to act together, that to each one of us can do something, but what you do really matters if it is done together. So this is uh, the need and the context. These are the need of the context. And then in order to go beyond uh, the each single discipline, and so in order to have a transdisciplinary this, this disciplinary approach, which is the right one, especially these days, we ask driving questions. Driving questions like, uh, do humans have the right to control human nature? Is the earth an inert machine available for exploitation? Does the earth have its intrinsic values, its intrinsic rights? Are we separated from Earth? 
and uh, we reflect upon that. So, so whatever discipline we are teaching, we reflect upon these driving questions. And, and so we have to act. So we reflect and then there is action. So we dream of uh, the, the future we would like to have, the present and future we would like to have. And we ask ourselves, what is our desired purpose? Uh, and from dream, we pass to vision. What policies, practices must be created to help achieve those purposes? And what mental models must be in place to achieve those purposes? And what can we do to make the world a better place? So driving questions, reflection, and then call for action. I'll just give you two examples of something we would like to do with our students. We would like to involve our, some of our students, actually quite a few, in uh, two initiatives, in two contests. One of them is a public speaking contest. So it, it is called Italy Pitches, and it is in collaboration with a university in Rome, which is called John Cabot University. So what do we want to do? We want to help kids to create their own elevator pitches. These are one minute pitches where kids have to campaign or sensitize on a specific environmental topic, or they may ask for money. So to raise funds to, for NGOs related to environmental issues. This is the first concrete outcome we would like to get to. The second one is another contest. This time it was issued by the Italian Ministry of Education on the occasion of the Italian presidencies of G20. First of all, we would like our students to be familiar with what G G20 is, uh, okay? It is a great honor to be, uh, I mean, the chairman of uh, uh, G20. So this contest uh, released by, issued by the Italian ministry is, uh, has got this title, Plan and Work to give a new face to the way we want to live. So what are we going to do with our students? We are going to do, we are going to draft proposals to envision courses of actions, procedures in the form of resolutions, in form of videos of other social advertising in order, I mean, to give always a concrete outcome, because for us, it is very important to make students work on something concrete, not just theoretical knowledge, but action. So for us, the formula is dream, vision, and action. Uh, so uh, why do we start this path? I must say that uh, my head teacher, my colleagues and me have been reflecting upon a phenomenon which has been, uh, which is quite uh, serious in Italy and I think in other countries. Very few citizens go and vote. OK, for at the national level and at the international level. So we started from this da the, these data. Why don't young people go and vote? OK, this is a, a right we have. Why don't we appreciate that? So in order to, uh, I mean, achieve this goal, we have decided to start a curriculum on global citizenship. So what do we want to uh, aim at? We want to develop mindsets, uh, mindsets such as uh, okay, I want you to take part, I want to have, I want to vote, because it is my right, but also my responsibility to vote. I, I think that I can make, I can do something to achieve a sustainable living style. I think I can, I can contribute to social justice. I think I can be a vehicle for change. So let's say about 20 classes, 400 kids and 11 teachers more 
more or less are involved into this work. Who is helping us? Of course, expert, but not only expert, because we as teachers, we are working a lot, the staff and the head teacher is working a lot, but we need the help from it, uh, need help from a side, uh, from outside. And these people are from universities, private and public, ministries, Foreign Affairs, and Ministry of Education, e twinning schools and Erasmus schools. And this is just to give you some examples because actually there are other stake stakeholders. What are our learning objectives? Well, as uh, Mrs. Gretti said, uh, um, okay, she divided and she helped us um, finding our way in the learning objectives. These are at, three, at least at three different levels, cognitive level, social emotional level, and behavioral level. At the cognitive level, I must say that the most important point at this stage is um, helping kids recognize the mental models underlying events. So as you can see here, you have a sort of, you have a iceberg, okay? So you have on top, the tip of the iceberg is events, okay? So, but underneath you have patterns, you have underlying structure, you have mental models. Let's imagine that we have pandemic, okay? The current pandemic, and this is the, the tip of the iceberg. But what do you have underneath? Underneath you have environmental destruction, you have habitat destruction, you have pollution, you have extractivism, you have growth economics, and underneath, underneath, you have a kind of a mentality in which mechanism and Cartesian duality is. Uh, uh, overwhelming everything, okay? So for us, it's very important uh, to work with kids uh, under this respect. Uh, there are always mental models uh, beneath everything, every phenomenon. At the social level, at the social level, emotional level, kids have to learn how to work in teams. They have to learn how to be to work independently and interdependently. I mean, interdependently means that if you don't take a step, other kids cannot take a step. So you are important and your contribution is important and everyone is a piece in the mosaic. And then we want to, them to feel that they belong to the planet, that they belong to humankind. At a behavioral level, we want them to work them, to, to, to learn that they have to do, they have to take risks, they have to uh, take risks and be innovators, they have to think out of the box. For us, it's extremely important to have kids who think out of the box, okay? Then uh, let, let, let me say something about our methodology. We use um, a methodology which is a blend of project-based learning, key competence approach, and service learning. Project-based learning uh, is uh, that you do something that has to be shown to somebody else, which has to have a concrete outcome for an authentic audience. Key competence means that we have to work on specific competence. You will get a um, um, uh, slide later about that. And survey a pinch of serving learning. What does that mean? Serving learning means that you have to do something for you're at local level, at a national level, at an international level. So you have to bear in mind that you have to be in service of others. Otherwise, you are not part of the humankind. Let me see. So long life competencies. This is what we are working on. Whatever framework you apply, so you can apply the EU recommendation 2018, of course, competence number six, the civic competence. But you may also use other frameworks like the UNESCO framework, Mrs. Carla 
Gwetti talked about that. So learning to live together, learning to live with others. Or you can also use another framework, which is the um, assessment and teaching of 21st century skills, uh, way of living in the world. This is the main competence we are working on. And what are civic competences, civic and social competences? Well, this is a combination of knowledge, of skills, of attitudes, on values uh, that enable people to be actively engaged. And through problem solving, critical thinking, decision making, and respect of diversity. These are our pivotal, I would say, points. Uh, now I want to uh, thank you. I want to thank you. I personally want to thank you. And on behalf of my head teacher, my focal point and my school, I want to, to deeply, uh, from deep down, thank you, um, UNESCO as ASP net, um, uh, contribution. You know why? Uh, because uh, you have taught us uh, us to be how we can be at an ideal level, at a vision level, at an action level, even in these terrible times, terrible times, because we are all overwhelmed by the emergency. And uh, I want to uh, personally thank to the other schools, uh, the school from Lanciano, the school from Oristano, the school from Lecce, the school from Lecce. These uh, uh, three schools have taught us a lot. And uh, when I uh, when I listened to their presentation, because we had quite a few sections actually in order to prepare for this uh, session here, live session, I was impressed by the work done by these primary teachers, uh, school teachers, uh, by the head teachers who are so overwhelmed, but they have uh, put all their energy into this project. I want to personally, and also on behalf of my head teacher, uh, thank uh, Mr. Paolo Orefice, and there is there are two Orefice, right? So we have Paolo and Carlo Orefice for their patience because they have led us uh, to this, uh, I mean, event. And also for our, I want to thank our um, partners from Mexico City. And um, thank you so much for making everything possible and uh, we we give up I mean for us it's very important to be able to work at this level thank you so much so um what is what does as aspen gives to us well well, it has a relevant information, updated resources, uh, access to high quality resources uh, and opportunity like this one uh, to meet people at a high, very high level and to be connected to partner school in Italy and all over the world. So I think that this is a, a big gift to our school and to our students and to our parents and to all, all our teachers. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, a very interesting presentation. Uh, we have time. So if for uh, Professoressa Guetti as moderator is, uh, is good, uh, uh, there are two questions uh, for Professoressa uh, Fasanelli. Uh, the first uh, is, a, is a question that I have, this is a symposium, so I think that it's important to share information uh, between us and uh, as UNESCO member of this committee and uh, a professor of the University of Siena, uh, this point is important. Uh, among the involved institution, uh, if I remember in page four or five, something like this, um, you have spoke about uh, a twinning and Erasmus plus school. So uh, which is, uh, which is the, the value 
of uh, such collaboration and uh, the relation with transdisciplinarity. So this is my question for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Refuge, for this question. Well, we are very proud to be part of, uh, to be an e-twinning school and to have had uh, at the moment three Erasmus Plus uh, projects uh, ongoing. Well, um, so uh, e-twinning and Erasmus Plus uh, projects are, have taught us a lot, uh, have taught us to think internationally, but not only kids, not only teachers, but only kids. So the, this kind of projects, which means that we are cooperating with schools from other European countries, and that we are working each day with them, with a twinning projects. And Erasmus Plus projects means that we go to these countries and they come to our countries. Uh, they have widened our scope um, and uh, they have widened our teaching and learning process. I'll give you an example. Cooperating with uh, these schools have taught us how kids and teachers from Portugal, from Sweden, from Belgium, from Luxembourg, from Germany have been coping with uh, the lockdown, the quarantine, and all the emergency measures we have uh, we had to come across. So, so this is one example. Another thing, you know that Europe. Everybody knows that in Europe we speak twenty eight uh, um, official languages. Okay, so our kids. Uh, through these projects, eTwinning and Erasmus Plus projects, learn how to deal with multi-plurilingualism. And so they have an authentic audience with which they can practice at their mother tongue plus the, the, key, the European languages that they are learning, which are French, Spanish, German, and uh, um, yeah, fr French, Spanish, and, and of course Italian, if there are um, co I mean, um, partners who speak Italian. So they have widened our scope and they have made us understand to understand, they have make us understand that un the motto of Europe, European motto, unity in diversity, is something which is real. First of all, because our many languages are spoken in uh, in Europe, and we are able to spoke them. Uh, some sp well, one more point, Mr. Refuge, if you allow, if you, you allow me, uh, that that some students have uh, gained such a confidence in themselves uh, in interacting with people from abroad, in, with teachers and and kids from abroad. They have been, they have gained such a confidence. That they after school, they have decided to, uh, to choose a good university abroad or a good university in Italy where in, everything is taught in English, for example. And I think that self-confidence for kids who have been international projects uh, and who have been able to build up their future through a path at an international level is very important. Thank you, Mr. Ravitcher, for this question. Uh, no, th thank you to you. I personally, I completely agree. There is another question uh, from Victoria Mendoza Barros, always uh, uh, for you, uh, Professoressa Fasanelli. How was and is being the effect in your students after this project? in personal and collective level. Yes, this is something I would, uh, this is connected to what I said before. I think we have to foster self-confidence in kids. They have to be, uh, if you train them to believe in themselves at school, if you do projects when they can interact with decisions makers, with stakeholders, okay, when they are 14, 15, 16, up to 19, they believe in themselves. So this is a, a great impact. If you do that at school, you can do that afterwards. So this is uh, the added values of this kind of uh, global citizen, citizenship projects uh, that you 
train yourself, okay? You talk to experts coming from outside, important experts like uh, UNESCO experts and other ones, and uh, you can interact to them. You can give the, you, them your proposal. And so if you experience that at school, you will be able to do that in your life. You have to trust yourself. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, please, Professor Isaguetti. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. and Professor. Um, and now uh, there is uh, uh, the secondary school from uh, Bosa, um, the institution Fischetta. Uh, the title of the project uh, Citizens of the heart and cultural heritage in COVID times. Her teacher, Rosella Huda, and focal point, Annalisa Marongiu. Please. Okay. <laughs> Greetings to all. I'm the school director, I'm Rosella Huda. I'm the school director of the secondary school, Giovanni Antonio Pischedda in Bosa a little town in the west coast of Sardinia. I'm uh, proud to be here as uh, Aspenet School, so thanks uh, so much for this great opportunity. We are going to discuss about citizens of Earth and cultural heritage in COVID times. Cultural heritage involves global citizenship, because it transcends the geography or political borders and it regards humanity. Now, more than ever, people need culture, said Ernesto Ottone, assistant UNESCO Director General for Culture. Culture makes us resilient. It gives us hope. It reminds us that we are not alone. The Earth's cultural heritage must be protected and promoted by bringing stakeholders together to share knowledge and opinion in a spirit of solidarity and cooperation. So our way to protect cultural heritage as a citizens of the Earth is going beyond borders, is showing solidarity and support is, uh, um, pro is uh, uh, protect, is uh, connecting with others, is comparing, sharing, and uh, discussing. School is where our students are taught to discover the world we live in. Through the curriculum, they are educated to be citizens of the earth. Through disciplines and across them, we build a sense of belonging to this planet. Thanks to disciplines, we discover the reality of the earth we live in. In our project, in the project, we are carried out the broad, complex, global issue of cultural heritage is addressed within the curricular subject. It is framed, analyzed, studied through methods such as discussion, argumentation, exchange of ideas. It is examined, taking into account different, different disciplinary perspectives, integrating knowledge and mutually assimilating knowledge in interaction, in search for solutions, new, for solution for new perspectives and therefore new knowledge. Now, let me introduce the focal point teacher, Annalisa Marongiu. Okay, good afternoon. Sorry, my microphone was off. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like you to 
thank you for uh, because you gave me the opportunity to take part to this uh, congress uh, third congress on a transdisciplinary transdisciplinary congress and uh, it is a symposium in a symposium experts are supposed to be discussing very important topics we are not experts we are teachers but we perfectly know what are our students needs okay but let me introduce you uh, my school my school is a, a comprehensive school. We've got the high secondary classic school, the high secondary scientific school. I teach in both of them. We've got the finance and marketing school, the professional school, and the hotel management school with boarding. Okay, this is our school project. Okay, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to speak about uh, citizens of Earth and cultural heritage in COVID times. That is a global issue. And we, we have to protect our culture because if we don't protect our culture, we are going to lose our roots and we, are, we will be unable to, uh, to build a valid future for our generations. And now our culture has been threatened by the COVID virus. And the COVID virus is impacting our movable and immovable Sorry. Tangible sorry, sorry, Professor, uh, there isn't a representation. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Can Excuse me. Have... Okay. Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> okay. Don't sorry. Now, now, can now you... you're sh sharing your uh, your okay. screen. Okay. Yes. Can you see it? Okay, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. It was not home. Okay. So uh, I was telling that the COVID is impacting our immovable and immovable and intangible culture, affecting our, our social life. And in this way, all the policymakers have to take solutions and decisions. So cultural heritage is a global issue. The COVID is a global issue. And for a global problem, global solutions are required. Okay, but let me introduce uh, the way we organize the transdisciplinary matter. Okay, uh, it is a, obviously a cross-curricular project and uh, cultural heritage is focused both on tangible and intangible culture. Okay, uh, then the number of subjects involved are eight, English, Greek, Latin, Italian, Mathematics, Science, Philosophy, and Art. The humanities disciplines will be focused on tangible culture and the threats to the human patrimony, both referred to the past and to the present. And the scientific disciplines will be focused on intangible natural culture, and its environmental threats and the possible solutions. Each subject will try to find the solutions, obviously each subject according to its disciplinary field and specialization. What were the students asked to do? The first thing the students were asked to do was a huge web research uh, that gave them the possibility to expand their knowledge about the topic in order to achieve a kind of a polydirectional insight into the other subjects. And uh, as for English, uh, my students prepared a particular project. I'm sorry because I cannot show you the slides, but I could try to relate it to summarize the project. Okay, uh, this project is a position paper writing. A position paper is a, a document that precedes the, the so-called resolution. And because in my school, my school has always taken part to move conferences abroad. Obviously now at the moment we cannot go anywhere, but in the previous year, we have taken part to a lot of uh, moon conferences. Uh, it's a very hard task for the students because they are not mother tongue students and when they have to face, uh, to, when they have to do with uh, uh, foreign students, uh, it's really difficult for them. Even we have to consider that when they uh, approach to the moon subject, uh, they have to use a very, very, very formal language. 
Okay, but the, my students did not want to write a resolution. They, um, they wanted to write a position paper. And in a position paper, the language is not maybe as formal uh, as in the resolution. Okay, um, a position paper is normally one page long, and, uh, but my students maybe exceeded just a little bit. Uh, they wrote more because they, they had to find a lot of information through a very huge web research. Okay, um, it is formed, a position paper is usually formed by three parts, the topic background, in the topic background, that is the first part, they uh, obviously focused on what cultural heritage is, like uh, something affecting both tangible uh, and intangible culture, but also uh, natural resources, uh, landscapes, uh, and biodiversity. The students also uh, reflected upon the fact that uh, cultural heritage has been menaced also by other threats, like, for example, uh, in war affected regions, uh, the cultural patrimony has always been put at risk, or there has been also other menaces, like, for example, uh, natural disasters, like uh, volcanic eruptions, and also other threats, like uh, urbanization. Uh, unchecked urbanization and also uncontrolled tourism and even neglect. In the second part, the students concentrated, obviously they had to be guided by me and by another colleague uh, who cooperated in the project, obviously. Uh, they, so in the second part that is called uh, measures previously taken, the students uh, tried to emphasize what was the role played by the UNESCO inside the problem. UNESCO and Italy have always worked together, have always created a kind of joint, for example, the so-called blue helmet of culture uh, that was against the illegal trafficking. There has been also in 1972 a special convention according to which it is possible to inscribe uh, to inscribe a heritage site inside the World Heritage Danger List. And there is a special committee of the cultural heritage that is ready to allocate funds, especially to endanger the properties. And more recently, my students found this information that have been a kind of a online uh, workshop divided into four sessions that was about the culture 2030 indicators uh, to the Congress, uh, to part at least the 27 countries who were introduced uh, to the new methodology of the Culture 2030 indicators. Uh, they are very crucial because uh, they play an important role, in, especially in um, because they uh, show how much important is uh, cultural heritage and sustainable world. As a matter of fact, when we approach to cultural heritage, we have to think that it regards uh, a lot of sectors, for example, sustainability and especially human development. Okay, uh, this was the second part. In the third part, that is uh, maybe the most important one because uh, it contains the so-called solutions and a, a good position paper should be very effective in this way, even if it is brief, uh, the students who are doing a kind of a play role, they are kind of a, a European delegates, uh, they have to convince that their uh, solutions are the best ones, obviously. So uh, one of the most uh, important solutions my students found was, for example, uh, for example, mm, promoting of seasonal, of seasonal uh, cultural tourism, and also promote a lesser visited, uh, uh, less visited location in order to avoid, uh, due to the ban on aggregation and meetings in public areas. Another important solution they found was um, obviously being the COVID uh, kind of uh, global problem. So they call for international cooperation and a synergy between the, all the member states. And again, they uh, recognize the role uh, of sustainable tourism uh, that is a key pillar, especially, uh, especially in the conservation of natural and cultural heritage. 
uh, especially for those countries that are minorities or migrant communities uh, where sustainable tourism represents the only source for living, the only, maybe the only uh, source for integration. And uh, okay, uh, moreover, my students also found other solutions like promoting further uh, literary, uh, literacy campaign uh, in order to help especially elderly people because in their view, elderly people are not so much experienced. We know that during the COVID crisis, the period of total mass confinement, uh, a lot of monuments and sites and cinemas and theaters were closed. So a lot of online and guided tours were organized. Okay. Um, okay. This, is, uh, this was the student's work for English. Okay, and these are the so-called educational gains. In what way uh, can be the school or the school benefited by the introduction of a transdisciplinary uh, subject and methodology? Uh, it obviously increases motivation thanks to a variety of perspectives. It teaches experiences that the students can have for their lifetime and it also contributes to make a distance learning, maybe just a little bit motivating, just to spice up our teaching and maybe go beyond to what are the traditional teaching plans. And in this way, critical thinking is encouraged, obviously, critical thinking that goes beyond the disciplinary boundaries. And the students could also learn how to transfer critical thinking skills synthesis research also to other uh, fields of experience. In this way, they could also develop a creativity and obviously social and civic competencies uh, that reflect the mirror global citizenship. And uh, the last one, uh, to empower entrepreneurial skills. We uh, totally believe on uh, entrepreneurial skills because we think that in this way, the students um, can also be uh, like job oriented, which is very important because they are able to take, the, they are taught how to take decisions, how to negotiate. Um, okay. Okay, these, uh, okay, no, no need to repeat what the project title is. So there are uh, eight classes involved with 90 students and eight teachers. As for the family involvement, we are going to organize the webinars with families and our supporting institutions are museums and local associations. And this is the school project. Okay, all the disciplines are represented in sites and uh, each one trying to find a solution. Uh, in this way, we can obtain a kind of integrated knowledge that goes beyond the disciplines. Okay. Um, so uh, this kind of a project is especially referred to high secondary classic school and high secondary scientific school. Okay, so uh, as for Greek, the teacher will be treating, will be concerned about the nature and environment in the Greek antiquity and with immense interventions on the environment. And as for Latin, uh, the same colleague will be concerned with environment and decay and he will be treating something about degradation in ancient Rome and urban plants. We know that urbanization is one of the most important. If it is not controlled, it can be very dangerous for the uh, maintenance of cultural heritage. And art, art will be concerned about art resiliency, new spaces to enjoy artwork in COVID times and mathematics will study, will try to study a kind of a mathematical function uh, with the monitoring of the COVID-19 contagion growth. And as for Italian, the teacher will be treating Manzoni and the cultural and intellectual responses to the Black Death. And as for English, uh, me together with another colleague will be speaking about the theme of urbanization bridging the gap between urban development and cultural heritage protection 
but that could also be other themes. We could uh, create uh, also literary themes uh, like uh, uh, the closing of the theatres due uh, in England due to the Black Death, or uh, we can also refer to Geoffrey Chaucer, who in the Canterbury Tales spoke about uh, some pilgrims going to Canterbury, uh, the celestial city, in order to thank Sir Thomas Beckett, who saved the town from the pestilence. There could be a lot of uh, points of discussion about this topic, or even Roman Britain. We have so many. And we have also got uh, the school English assistant, who will be concerned about uh, smart towns, smart cities that are uh, sustainable and uh, are uh, um, cultural heritage oriented because they are very respectful for the environment and for cultural heritage. And um, as a science, uh, the colleague will be concerned about the biological indicators for environment quality control. And as for philosophy, uh, the teacher will be concerned about the modern science she will speak about uh, Francis Bacon and Galileo, the two great uh, pioneers of the new scientific method, a method that uh, celebrates is the triumph of knowledge, knowledge that combats ignorance. Okay, um, and these are the um, cognitive, the learning objective, the cognitive learning goals, the social emotional learning goals and the behavioral goals. Uh, obviously, as for the first one, we aim at developing behavior uh, kind of, a, we, we tend to develop a, and to promote research, like uh, taking notes, uh, synthesizing, collecting data, address the fact and the problem uh, that are very useful uh, skills and ability that can help to develop a new study method. And as for the social emotional learning goals, we wanted to promote self-awareness self-management, pluralism, and solidarity. We want the students to help us to build a fair and a supportive society with the respect for diversity, active citizenship, and forcing intercultural education, and obviously enhance the artistic and cultural heritage. And for the behavioral goals, we wanted to promote autonomy, a spirit of entrepreneurial that I have already told is very crucial for the students uh, growth uh, and even uh, because it is a job orienting and uh, uh, in this way we are also promoting maybe a sense of competence because uh, competency uh, if it is done in the right way could be very important uh, very important skills especially for uh, if you wanted to be an entrepreneur you must compete you must compete and obviously uh, you have to be uh, you have to be honest loyal and peace-oriented. And these are our methodologies and approaches. As I have already told you, uh, we, have, um, we think that uh, we, we've got inspiration from the new model and extended it, expanded it uh, into the school curricula. Okay, we um, believe that the role model provided by the moon is very important because the students, yes, do uh, very, uh, very frequent simulations and they approach very important global issues regarding human rights, uh, it could be international security, environmental issues. So they are very, they become very, very open minded. Not to count the importance. Uh, that the public debate has got. We noted some, that sometimes the students, not only for English, but also for other subjects, are very reluctant. They don't want to speak a lot. They don't want to be judged. They fear to express what their opinion is. So we think that this methodology makes them uh, ready uh, and eager. Maybe it increases their self-esteem, okay? And obviously the students, uh, it is very important for us, the uh, web research that helps them to expand their horizons. And these are the transversal skills. Okay, they are a great element of value. Obviously the students will acquire the value of uh, something that has to be protected and safeguarded as a common good. Okay, and uh, obviously the students also uh, learn 
um, not only the aspect of tangible culture, but also the aspect of intangible culture. What are, for example, the folklore, the dialects, and also micro-communities. There are, for example, micro-communities, the Aborigines tribes that are going to disappear because during the COVID crisis, the governments don't want to give them any financial support and they are trying to combat the virus using the, the jungle plants. So they became aware also about micro-communities and especially marginalized communities. And in this way, uh, we are able to make them promote sustainable development, cultural diversity, and also contemporary creativity. And uh, we wanted to teach them that uh, cultural heritage is an investment and not a cost. Okay, uh, we are very grateful for the opportunity given to us by UNESCO and ASMIT, also for the white material uh, provided. For example, the students inside the position paper, uh, they are obliged also to quote the sources they take their, their information from. And obviously, the students are not expected to invent anything, so they, uh, they have to... Um, they have to rely on the main information given by, uh, that can be found. And in this case, UNESCO has provided them with a lot of information. So in our vision, we, uh, we believe that UNESCO has, uh, has played a very important role, creating a kind of pathways that encourage the students to behave in a critical way and also to be responsible citizens open to cultural heritage differences and also uh, trying to be uh, multicultural oriented citizens. In this way, the school becomes like an ideal place to build these ideas uh, because the students are able, uh, yes, they are, build, they are able to build strong interactions also with local communities and to compare their local communities with a global communities. So they become more globally oriented. And this is the last slide, okay, with our school logo, you can see the Malaspina castle. It is a medieval castle. Um, and uh, you can see the colorful houses of uh, the medieval village. We are a park, medieval park. And on the other side, you see the uh, tanneries, the local tanneries uh, that uh, um, have been recently uh, rebuilt using totally uh, total sustainable materials uh, like wood and clay. And it is important to say that they have been appointed uh, like they've been recognized uh, since 1989 like a national monument inside of these buildings the local animal skills were processed. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. For... Thank you, Professoressa Maronge. Uh, we, we have uh, about 20 minutes, uh, Professoressa Guetti. So if you agree, there is two questions for uh, Professoressa Maronge. The, the first, uh, is from Vittoria Mendoza Barros. Why do you choose the cultural approach to link the other aspect of the project? It is a relevant aspect of your community. This is the first one. Yes, as a matter of fact, yes, my, my town has got a, yes, a, a lot of a cultural patrimony. So we think that speaking about culture it was the best thing because we cannot ignore how much important is culture. So that is why we chose this topic, absolutely. Even because we wanted the students to be aware that when we approach it to cultural, uh, to cultural heritage, we're not simply approaching to cultural heritage, but also to other aspects like sustainable development. Okay, thank you. The second one from a different person, I don't know, who is, but uh, uh, what are the educational gains of using the model, the United Nations methodolo methodology, as an integral part of the transdisciplinary school project? 
okay, as I, as I have already told before, uh, we really believe that this methodology can be very effective um, in making the students more prepared and globally oriented. For example, we have got some uh, students, ex-Mooners, they took part to a lot of the Moon conferences uh, that at the moment are attending very important university. They have been oriented in their diplomacy, the diplomatic career because they learn how to debate, how to analyze the pros and against of the problem, the advantages and disadvantages. They become, uh, yes, very, uh, very confident in what is the public speaking. And uh, obviously, they also learn some other important values like uh, the tolerance, tolerance because they have to share uh, their opinion with others. They have, they have to be very respectful. And um, obviously, they also, uh, yes, maybe um, self-esteem, according to us, is increased. It is fundamental for us, uh, yes, especially the technique of debate that is inside the moon. And also the aspect of research is very important because sometimes the, the students don't like it to approach, to read. In this case, it is exactly the contrary. They are obliged to read in order to expand and to give an order to their knowledge. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is another one. If we have time, we, we back to, to the first school uh, in Lanciano. Uh, so I don't know if uh, for uh, Professoressa Spinelli or Di Campli, but the question is, uh, what learning improvement can be pointed out applying methodology that promote the transdisciplinarity? Improvements. The improvements are a lot, obviously. And uh, we can... Uh, uh, remember uh, maybe the most important um, definitely a uh, development of the discriminating uh, analytical and uh, metacognitive thought uh, then uh, um, a development of uh, creativity as uh, an instrument of research and content uh, of course a testing of new languages and the new strategies and uh, the use of instruments as well of a communicative interconnection. And um, even an increase of enthusiasm and uh, collective participation, um, a sense of a global, uh, a belonging of a global community and uh, overcoming of egocentrism and uh, an important uh, opening to the otherness, uh, to who in some way is uh, different from us. Thank you. Uh, there is another one uh, for uh, Professoressa Fasanelli is from Liceo Niccolò Machiavelli. Si. Uh, uh, according to you, to your presentation, what are the most important ingredients of a global citizenship project? Well, I must say, first of all, that uh, why do we do global citizenship projects? Uh, because school is just not uh, about academic uh, knowledge. It's about uh, shaping kids uh, into global citizenship, uh, interconnected, uh, ready to act, uh, innovators. So uh, as for the ingredients, uh, Mr. Refuge, I would say, First of all, student-centered project, uh, because transmissive uh, learning has not, uh, is, has not been, has not turned out to be effective. At the moment, it's not effective for, effective for our kids. Kids have to try their hands. They have to learn by doing. They have to make mistakes. Mm. They have to adjust. Uh, their mistakes. They have to be able to negotiate with other kids uh, from Italy and from other countries. So, uh, global citizenship projects have to be collaborative uh, at a local level and at an international level. This is a must for us. 
and they have to be supported by technology, but not technology per se, but technology, thoughtful technology. Let's give an example. If uh, you use technology to, to share documents, to create a, a procedure together with other kids from your school or from other schools, that, that is a good technology to be used. And then I want to say that one important point for our school that the global citizenship projects have to be empowered by the collaboration with institutions. That's very important for us. So university, ministries, NGOs, kids have to get in touch with decision makers. They have to, even they, they are 14, 15, 16, up to 19, they have to be able to talk to people who actually make decisions. That's very important for us. That's why we are so grateful to the Italian Ministry of Education for involving us and to the ASPN Net, um, network. And so, and then one more point is that uh, students, I mean, uh, these projects have to have a good dissemination plan. What does that mean? That you have to be able to share with others. So projects are projects have to be transferable. They have to be uh, understandable, okay, by other teachers, schools in the world. And so the, a dissemination plan, plan can guarantee that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, probably uh, the questions are over. It's almost 8 p.m. Uh, Roma time. So probably Professor Esaguetti, you, you you want to do some conclusion? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like uh, to thank everyone, um, especially, especially the hard teacher, the focal points, the teacher, the student, the schools. Uh, this um, symposium represented an important event for the Italian education. This is the first time that the Italian school ASCNET participated to an international conference so important. This is a, a, a sign event. Uh, the participation of the international coordinator Madame Saito represents a special moment for this Italian school. Uh, so I thank very much everyone and uh, let the floor to Secretary General, Dr. Enrico Vicenti, please. No, sir. Ah. No, I'm here, sorry. Um, well, it has been extremely interesting. Uh, also for me, it's the first time that I have uh, a close relation with the uh, Italian school uh, being part of the network, and I was very much impressed by the level of competence and, um, and the level of uh, engagement. I really was very, I was really very happy to see how much UNESCO uh, mission is, uh, is taking into consideration, how much of the UNESCO initiatives and programs are used by these schools. So, um, I understand now why they have been applying and why they have been accepted uh, in the network. For us, it's a very encouraging uh, um, sign, and I really look forward uh, to working with them in the near future. So thank you very much for, for what you do in this hard time in the field with students. Thank you very much.
And then, Professor Orefice, can you close? Uh, yes, thank, thank you. I only some words as a part of uh, the Italian Congress Committee. Uh, it was a pleasure for us, for the UNESCO chair, to, to share this, uh, this moment with you, with the schools of uh, ASP.NET, uh, with uh, the secretary of uh, the UNESCO. And I think, and we think that uh, it was a, a special moment to share good practices and idea about what transdisciplinary is and how it works in your schools. So as you know, uh, with uh, today, uh, we close the first uh, week, the first Italian week. So uh, my special thanks uh, to all the Italian Congress Committee, uh, to the, for the director of the UNESCO chair and for uh, Giulietta Idar, the, the, the president of the Congress. Uh, so uh, gracias Giulietta para para compartir con nosotros este tiempo y cerrar esta primera semana como, como Semana Italia. And uh, so, thanks to, to everybody, thanks to Dr. Vicenti, and uh, see you soon in, on the web uh, following these uh, uh, special events and this Congress. So, thank you to everybody. Arrivederci, arrivederci a tutti. Grazie. Arrivederci, arrivederci. arrivederci. Grazie. Bye bye, bye bye, thank you. Bye, thanks. Buonasera. Un abbraccio da Lizia a tutti, buona serata, grazie.